I don't know much about sword fighting. Don't worry, far away, Nisha, because today's sponsor, Lad Fencing, does. Perfect. Also, I know it's not called Lad Fencing, I know it's LAD, but Lad Fencing sounds so much fucking cooler. Back before they were made illegal, duels to the death were the go-to way for people to solve arguments. But have you ever wondered what would happen if someone challenged someone to a duel who was much, much better at it than they were? Well, if the story of Guy Chabot de Genac, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, is anything to go by, the answer is that they usually went poorly. Unless, of course, they cheated. So, first things first, that pronunciation of the name is terrible. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Second of all, what the hell is going on? Well, what's going on is a story that dates back to 1547 and involves the aforementioned Guy Chabot de Janac. I am hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm just going to call him Janac and just hope that's close enough that I'm not going to get yelled at by people who speak French in the comments. And it occurred after Janac heard a rumour that one Francois de Vivon, again I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, had been spreading a rumour that he'd been sleeping with his own mother, proving that even all the way back then people were quick to play the motherfucker card. Well, obviously, that rumour would annoy anyone. Yeah, it would, especially back then when honour was everything. And Jarnak was incredibly pissed and sought to doom de Vivon to like, reclaim his honour. And he endlessly petitioned the king um, to like, grant permission for a doom, which the king denied, which many people said was probably a good thing for Jarnak because de Vivon was arguably one of the finest swordsmen in France at the time, and challenging him to a doom was tantamount to suicide. So, do you have any examples of how good he was? Uh, well, yeah, there's like countless tales of the people he felled in one-on-one -on -one combat, but the thing that made Divivon so scary was his freakish, brutish strength uh, that allowed him to do things such as tackle opponents in full-plate armour to the ground, at which point he stabbed them to death. Oh, charming. So even wearing full-plate armour wasn't enough to stop Divivon from getting stuck in there. And if people aren't aware of how broken OP um, play armor was back in the day, it was basically cheating on the battlefield. You were almost invincible. Nothing could touch you, except for a very strong man with a sword. And you can see elements of that in stuff like Game of Thrones, where you have a character like The Mountain, who's just so massive that even a more skilled opponent, such as, spoilers, the Viper, can't really do anything to stop him because his sheer brute strength allows him to just hyper armor through his attacks and crush his skull with his bare hands. And we can put a clip in of that because this video is sponsored, meaning we don't have to worry about advertisers. I killed her children. Then I raped her. Then I smashed her head in like this. And Nisha, before we move on, you said you're not too familiar with sword fighting as like, you know, a martial art, but have you, have you got a favourite sword fight from a movie or a TV show at all? There's a sword fight from, I don't know if you've seen it, but The Road to El Dorado. That one's Ooh. pretty funny. That's, that's like a, a, a deep pull. I, I remember that film, but I don't know why I remember it. So what happens in that? So it's about these con artists. They basically trying to cheat cheat the way through a game and they get found out that they're cheating so they like turn on each other as like an act like they're pretending ah. to be annoyed at each other so they do a pretend sword fight and they're like you fight like my sister you pinsing, pinsing, ah, ah, you fight like my sister i fought your sister that's a compliment well my number one has to be that sword fight from the first pirates of the caribbean movie where you just look at it and go you can tell that Orlando Bloom spent so fucking long practicing that fight. And the Pirates of the Caribbean movies had really good sword fighting in them, but it got kind of ridiculous towards the end, and he gets like the fourth movie, and they're stood on top of that giant moving wheel while fighting. <laughs> as stupid as that looks, that was a real practical effect, and there were stuntmen on top fighting with swords, but I, I like the, the more low-key, um, intimate fight of the first movie. Like the part where Jack Sparrow has Will Turner at sword point and just says to him, like, what are you going to do now? And he picks up the fire poker. And it's like, that is such a dangerous thing to wield. I am scared of that. You are between me and my way out. And now, you have no weapon. And that reminds me a little bit of a moment in Shaun of the Dead that my friend lost his shit at. And it is um, right at the end when they have like the standoff yeah. uh, about whether or not they should shoot Sean's mum. 
and like they all start breaking bottles and Nick Frost hands a broken bottle to someone else and picks up a corkscrew. And it's like, oh, that looks so fucking dangerous. I'd be more scared of that because I don't know what it's going to do to me. Uh, yeah, because he is threatening that guy and um, Nick Frost's character's like, yeah. Yeah, proper hyping it up. He's, you're a dickhead, yeah. I'm not a chartered accountant. Well, you look like one. Yeah. I'm a lecturer. You're a twat. Yeah. Yeah, so bringing it back to jean -Noc. Mm -hmm. You said he was spared from being killed. Yeah, almost certain death, uh, which you think would have deterred him when everybody who knew him was like, please stop petitioning the king to fight Vivon. He will kill you. He's that good. But Jarnock could not take the affront to his honour and petition the king for a year, each time being turned down. However, his luck changed when the king died and got replaced, and the new king went, OK, yeah, sure, I, I authorise this duel to take place. Um, you will fight each other in 30 days' time. At which point, Jarnock realised, oh, fuck, I've got to fight the finest swordsman in France in a <laughs> sword fight, and absolutely started shitting his pants. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? It's all bark and no bite at that point, because I feel like maybe Jarnock was just trying to show off of like, do you know that thing like, oh, hold me back, hold me back. Yeah. And then the moment your mate lets you go, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, you have that in a lot of TV. That's what he, he was doing. And Jarnock was understandably all kinds of terrified about having to go fight one of the strongest and best sword fighters in all of France. All right, so what did he end up doing? Well, Jarnock, um, he tried a lot of things. And the first thing he did is try to stall um, Vivon and ask him to postpone the duel so he could prepare. You know, the duel he'd been asking for for over a year, uh, which Vivon was having none of. Um, he then travelled to Montessori's around France, asking them to pray for his victory. <laughs> I'm not going to beat him fairly, like, will God help me? And he started he's asking monks, can you please pray to help me? So did he do anything else to try and stall the fight? Uh, yes, he did, because one of the rules of dueling back then was that both parties had to agree um, on the weapon they were going to fight with. And Jarnock had the idea of, well, if I suggest a weapon that Vivon does not have, he will have to waste time procuring it or will call off the duel because he's unable to fight with that weapon. But um, Vivon was a very wealthy man, and every single time Jarnock... Um, suggested a new weapon, one of his servants would go out and acquire it for him, and Vivon would say, I'm happy to fight with this weapon, I am skilled in its use. <laughs> and uh, uh, as an idea of how desperate Jarnot was to avoid this fight that he'd been asking for for a year, he suggested and changed weapons 30 times. <laughs> 30 times? Yeah, as if it needs to be made more clear that Jarnot was completely and utterly out of his depth. That sounds pretty funny, so what did he end up doing? Well, after all of this failed, Jarnot realised, I'm going to have to fight this man. So what he did is he sought out the greatest fencing master he could find, a guy called, I shit you not, Captain Kaizo, and asked him to teach him one move that would allow him to best a superior opponent. So did he agree to teach him? Uh, Kaizo did, funnily enough, and he taught um, Janok a technique um, known as stabbing your opponent in the back of the leg. It basically amounted to running up to your opponent and stabbing them in the calf to incapacitate them, at which point you could stab them to death or let them bleed out. Ooh. And Reportedly, Jarnock spent about a month training with this fencing master to learn that one move. If anyone's curious about what Vivon did during this 30 days, as mentioned, he's one of the finest swordsmen in France. He was very confident that he was going to win this duel and reportedly spent the 30 days in the lead up to the duel feasting, drinking, and generally having a good time, which was bad news for him because Jarnock was off in the mountains leveling the fuck up. Towards the end of Jarnock's training, news that he was learning, this legendary technique spread amongst uh, the aristocracy of France, who began betting on whether or not he'd be able to pull it off, because Vivon was a, a very skilled swordsman and would, of course, be able to counter this move. And the only real thing going for Jarnock was that the move was seen as being such a cowardly, dishonourable tactic that... Um, many swordsmen just didn't bother to learn how to defend against it because you never anticipated that opponent would do it in an honourable duel. <laughs> Jarnock, on the other hand, had no such qualms about learning this move. As evidenced by the fact, he went and sought out a fencing master to teach him this move. And for anyone wondering what happened in the ensuing duel, it reportedly lasted all of 10 seconds, um, most of which <laughs> consisted of Jarnock sprinting towards Vivon. Uh, slitting the back of his calf and stabbing him to death. Oh, God. Ugh. <laughs> it's just... Ugh. You, you kind of have to respect that. It reminds me a little bit of... There's the film Warrior uh, with uh, Tom Hardy, I believe. 
And the thing about that movie is that Tom Hardy's character is a fucking unit. Like, he is unstoppable, and there's, like, a, a tidbit about his character revealed later in the movie. Oh, he was in the army, and he got a medal because one of his like, fellow soldiers was trapped inside a tank, and he tore the tank apart with his bare hands to get in. Holy shit. And they find this out after he's, like, gone on a tear through the world of UFC by knocking out every opponent he fights in one punch. Because they walk in and showboat and he just knocks them the fuck out. Like, he walks into the ring with absolutely no fanfare, no music, no trainer, no manager, knocks them out and leaves. And he's just like, what do you do against a man like that? And the answer is you stab him in the back of the ankle. Today's video was sponsored, which seems to be quite a regular thing now. <laughs> yeah, we've got a couple of sponsors, and today's sponsor was a nice guy called Patrick, um, who had no input on the content you just saw, besides suggesting that we maybe talk about something to do with what he'd like me to talk about right now, which is HEMA. Uh, something he wasn't sure I'd be familiar with, but I am, because I've got a friend who does it. And HEMA, for people who don't know, is Historical European Martial Arts. So it's the exact kind of shit we've just been talking about in the video and um, he represents a club um, lad fencing or LAD fencing which you can find linked below based in New York and Pennsylvania and he asked me to do two basic things one um, tell people about his club and two let people know that HEMA is a thing that they can do because I'm guessing there's some people out there who don't know that you can just go out and learn to fight with a sword and study from the same manuscripts that knights did back in the day yeah, that's pretty cool. Well, it's an interesting way to keep fit, and as mentioned, I have a friend who you know, Nisha, it's a mutual friend of ours, yeah. who does this, and they never shut up about it. <laughs> that's a big passion. It. Yeah, it's a, it's a big passion. They never shut up about it, they're very good at it, and they let me once pose with one of their swords while wearing a doublet, which you can see behind me. <laughs> Because I, I just walked into his house one day. It was a fucking broadsword. It's like, you see a broadsword? It's like, I'm fucking taking a picture of this broadsword. I don't give a fuck. Do you know what? I'll ask the friend who does it if they'd like to um, uh, put up some photos that they've taken so they can get some, uh, some publicity on this channel, if they want to anyway. Uh, if not, I'm sure there's some pictures behind me provided by Patrick. Well, as I mentioned, um, in addition to just letting people know about his club, Lad Fencing, which is an amazing URL to own. But if you don't happen to be based in either of those areas, there is another website you can go check out, which is linked below, like Hema Alliance. I, I'm gonna double check that, one sec. Yes, it is Hema Alliance, um, and then you go on Club Finder, and you can find a local club near yourself that will allow you to practice and learn these historical martial arts so that you too can learn to fell an opponent by stabbing them in the back of the calf, if that's something they'll teach you. And I'm now wondering, because one of the things that Patrick asked me to clarify specifically in the video, which is one of the reasons I wanted to work with them, is that HEMA is an open and inclusive um, pastime, and they invite anybody to take part. And it's generally a place of positivity and camaraderie. But I'm wondering, are there like bad HEMA clubs? You know, like Cobra Kai? Yeah. Like where Cobra Kai and they teach people to sweep the leg. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't give a fuck anything for the win. I'm wondering, are there like the bad version of HEMA clubs where they teach you the secret moves like what Jarnock did? And you can have something like when you try and join the HEMA club and they ask you at the front door, like, by joining, do you promise to uphold the ideals of a knight? And you go, no, fuck that. And they go, we'll come to a dark club. I bet, I bet there is. It must exist. If not, if, <laughs> if it's... someone watches this video and gets the idea, it might exist after hey, that. Hey, <laughs> Patrick, there you go. There's an idea for it, for the Dark Hema Alliance and teach people how to fight like dirty. And then you can start a rivalry and then you can get a Netflix TV show, that'd be awesome. I think the, the closest I got, I've got to sword fighting is uh, a few years ago at a house party. Me and my housemate were like arguing over who had control over like Spotify, basically. Okay. So we had these foam swords and oh, whoever... Oh, I sell the fight. <laughs> whoever like was better at the foam sword fighting won the priority over the Spotify, and I won. Oh, so like, don't mess with Nisha. Nisha's got mad skills, but... The foam swords, yeah. <laughs> the one that I remember is that, that mutual friend we had, he had like the practice swords, and I yes. just remember being a proper dick when I picked one up and was like, doing the stupid Star Wars, like, whoa, 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 and he just stabbed me, just straight up right in the chest in the middle, and you, you're dead. And why would you flail around like an idiot? You're leaving yourself open. I'm like, man, I have so much to learn. And then I thought to myself, if only there was the Dark Hema Alliance to teach me how to counter this honourable techniques. 
But yes, thank you to Patrick for sponsoring today's video. If you're at all interested in learning how to fight with a sword or dress like a knight and punch people in the balls, um, you can find links below that will help you do that. And for anyone wondering what's happening to the money we've been paid for this sponsorship, I believe it's 500 US dollars. Uh, that will be split between the channel uh, so we'll be putting that into today's fund for the channel to uh, make up for the money. This video is not made from advertising, so we're running no ads against this video because it's been sponsored. And the rest will be split up uh, between each editor. So they get a nice bonus just for being part of the channel and sticking with me when we didn't do sponsorships. So uh, thank you to Patrick for that. Yeah, thank you.